it is part of the Angry Animators set, and when I went looking for what they had previously done, it redirected me to them. So I'm just going to make this nice and large, uh, boom, 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 and then go through the stages of Animator. Now, to make use of everything possible, I'm going to right click and not make it a motion tween, but I'm going to go up to the top here and modify and convert it to a symbol. Um, walking. Uh, let's call it walk cycle. Cycle, boom, done. It's a graphical object, great. Make sure I got that right, and let's double click on it. So now I'm actually inside the object, and I need to set this up so that I can actually animate the character. Um, now this is going to be my reference layer that I will then delete later, so I'm just going to call that ref, and I'm going to break it down. So um, it needs to be animated over um, eight parts, but I don't want to animate on ones because that's a little too quickly. It might be too too fast, um, and I can that also allows me to adjust the timing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate. Um, let's see, eight frames by two is sixteen. So I'm going to insert a frame here, sixteen, and I'm going to put a little reference mark about there. Now this thing I'm going to go in by keyframe. Actually, I'll just start with the first one and I'll show you what I'm doing. So here, where the reference is, I'm just going center of the body or even top of the head. No, between, underneath the body, directly beneath the, between the feet. Because what I'm trying to do is set it up so that the character's body doesn't move. Uh, hold down shift so I can only go horizontal. Yep. But just simply bobs up and down. Oops. Uh, keyframe it. That. And that way, hopefully, um, the end result will be a fairly smooth animation. Uh, da -da -da. Well, that's the hope anyway, so... Give me a sec while I set this up and I'll get back to you. Alright, so just to make it a little easier and to avoid all these um, problems, let's just insert a layer, I wanted that below there, because I'm going to create a mask layer. Uh, if you haven't done masks before, go watch the one that I did, which was um, animated lines. So, I just need to get, I suppose, this part, and I'm just going to mask it. And that way... Oh, that one not quite right, but you can sort of see here, down, down, up a little bit, that could be a little forward, so arrow key, come on, just just a little bit. Oh, all right, we'll just hide that one and then. Oh, it's locked both layers. All right, well we'll unlock the layer. No, undo. I need it. <sighs> that one forward a little bit, just like that. And I needed this one here, so then I can go. And all I'm doing is making sure things are pretty much in the right place. So select that. Dun -dun. That's only up by a fraction. But the, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. This one, this one was the problem. Alright, so, oops, wrong one. Boom, 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 boom. Select it first, then slide forward. No, it doesn't like it. Oh, it's because it's still locked. Some days I like that. Uh, turn on onion skinning so I can see the frame before, and that's not going to help. Drat. Alright, well, no. Um, oh, as luck would have it, that's good. So, this layer, two, so this is my mask, um, character mask. Hit a random character in there, but let's uh, get rid of it. Alright, so. I don't actually need that important, at this point I can probably get rid of the bottom two layers, but 
I'm now going to have to add in all the animation stuff. So this contact point, that can just go. And I'm just going to have the body. All right, I'm just going to focus in on the body. Body and head, in this case. Turn off onion skinning because this is a way of working around that requirement. Uh, zooming in a little bit, I'm really just going to do tracing, really. Um, I may want to draw that front arm first, but we'll see how we go. That bit of fill, probably a smaller size. Yes, and I'll have a go at trying to draw this in quick succession. Um, and we'll see how we go. So, that's pretty much done. Um, you go, what? I'm just going to insert a keyframe and move this thing down. Everything else is locked, so I can just grab this and drop it straight down. If I wanted to get fancy, I could even, I don't know, fill it with some colours, do some other drawing. Um, let's change the fill to something at least recognisable. Undo. Let's select off it first. Then select the bucket fill. Um, another fill, kind of done. Um, and I probably should have done it here as opposed to there. Um, uh, let's see, this one, eyedropper, sample. Whoa, that was not what I intended. So, um, let's go select off, uh, select that, that's got the fill. If I switch to here, this it remembers the fill, go back to here and fill it in, done. All right, so jump along a couple of frames, insert a keyframe, move it around. You should just need to go up and down uh, with the occasional wobble. Um, but most of the time, it's usually pretty good. And I mean, this is kind of cheating doing it via reference, but um, if you want to truly become a, a good animator, then you'd be hand drawing this by yourself. Um, and practicing until you're, you're happy with the results. Um, which may actually be never, but you know, you do the best you can. Uh, doo -doo -doo. And that one's still out, because I'm only meant to be bobbing this guy up and down. So, that's the body cycle, right? That's, that's kind of done. Now, I want to do the lead arm. So I'm going to hide the body for the moment, and then draw in this lead arm yeah, I didn't want to do that fill, but I'll do that black to do all the edge work. And um, this is going to be fun because I'm rubbish at drawing arms. All right. Um, now, this is arm front because it's the leader, and we'll cheat to do the back one. So right at this front stage here, point of contact. All right. Take your time. Boom. All right, and I may even want to switch color to I don't know something like the gray to get that bit in there. Now, because I'm only replicating this, um, of course, it's not going to be a great result. So I'm going to insert that frame there. Um, I'm doing the best I can, but it's not my area of strength. So you know, and then of course it distorts and twists. So do I have to redraw it? Well, probably. Um, if I can not get it where I want it. So if we just do this, that, but still, it's still not great. Um, now I can try, hold down shift to select more areas. Whoops, drop that there, undo, I might get all in there. Normally you can hover over this and that moves the whole lot, but if you grab an edge, no. if you actually grab an edge like that, it distorts it. So in this case, I'm gonna have to redraw but, you know, that's life. Uh, get rid of that. Oh, that's way too big. Still too big. But I will save what I can and redraw what I cannot. So, back to the little squiggly thing. Oh, that's too big. What was I on? 
I don't know, it wasn't one, it was about four or five, so let's see how we go. And because this thing is pressure sensitive, um, should be mostly okay. Um, we'll just shade that. Now, one of the tricks here is you might go, well, I want to actually have the arm colored the same way as the body, but I can't draw it in. And the hassle, of course, is if we go to the tool and change the fill to a white, it may not work. Just do that to there to there. And then we might be able to do the bucket fill, uh, changing to whatever blue I had before. Bang. Yeah, it's not happy with that. Well, it's happy with that. Oh, it's not happy because I missed that tiny little gap. And because it was white, I couldn't see it. But because you've got a shade of blue anyway, you might as well just use a blue brush. So, do -do -do. touch, touch, yep, just. And then fill. Done. So the character is just a little blue. Uh, then, of course, we can do the... Whoops, no, we have to do the brush thing first. And you can sort of see what I'm going with here. Um, yeah. So that's the arms. I'm going to skip to the other part, which is the legs. Because that's, ideally, the more important part. And then I'll tidy it up and I'll show you at the end the other stuff. So I'm just going to focus on the front leg. So instead of layer, um, leg underscore front... All right, now this first frame here, again, standard drawing technique to sort of block out what you want happening and that kind of stuff. So, yep, fill. So from the hip, I'm just going to go down to here. That foot is kind of bad, but that's okay. Um, if you have a good idea of human proportion, anatomy and all that sort of stuff, then just draw your own people. You'll probably find it a lot easier. Um... So, dun, dun, that's fill, done. All right, now jumping onto the next frame. Uh, let's, this is going to have to be redrawn, so I'm going to have to redraw it every stage. So I'm going to run through this. I'll speed up the video so you don't have to sit through me doing this stuff, and we'll go from there. So yeah, anyhow, this point I have two arms, two legs. Great, I've got half a character. Um, it doesn't look really bad if I hold, hide my reference. It's sort of hopping along. Um, but how do we finish it? This is where we need to get a little bit tricky. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to add a layer. This puts in layer seven. So this is going to be my uh, leg back, uh, much like the other animation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these first um, four frames. I'm going to copy them, and then I'm going to paste and overwrite down here. Then I'm going to grab the oops, the last couple. I'm going to copy, and then I'm going to paste and overwrite here. So now I have two legs. Woohoo! Great, I'm getting there. I want to change the color of the background just to differentiate it, but that's cool. All right, can do the same trick with the arm. Um, now, I haven't finished animating this, so I should wrap that up now. Um, but you can get the idea, and I'm going to leave it there because this video is going way over time. Um, but as always, don't forget to save. Uh, walk cycle. And then export your finished video. The last little bit, and I'll do this now because I need to wrap this up. So if I just go to this character, into there... I'm going to hide my mask layers and my background so I don't have to deal with it. But I still need it as reference, so this is going to get annoying. Um, anyhow, um, is I'm going to want to animate this guy walking. Right, so this is my BG for background. This is my character. Oh, I'm not allowed to use character as a name. Character, okay, cool, that's fine. Let's change it to something else. I'm going to run it over that, that much. All right, insert frame. So... 
here in this background layer, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I'm just going to add a piece of ground. So I'm just going to grab my brush, drop that in there. Um, because I've got the legs, this is this will kind of work. And you notice it's a wavy line. You go, oh, the character, wavy line, what are you doing? Um, so, because this is here, um, I'll actually drop the background above the character for the time being, but then I'll move it down when I'm finished. And you'll see the finished result when I've tidied it all up. So I'm going to grab this character and just drop them about there. That looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to just simply motion tween this. Yes, it converts it to... Oh, whoops, wrong layer. Motion tween that layer. Yep, done. All right. So, zooming in. As the character trundles their way along, I want to move it. So, I need to turn on onion skinny and go, well, what am I going to do with this character? It's uh, the foot stomps down. So, boom, boom. So, that's... Oh, which moved too far. This one, that's not working for me. Pull that back. Yeah, that's better. I just want to reference it to back in time. So I want to see the previous frame. So here to here. Oh, well, that's not right. So I better move that along. Um, I'm going to have to finish this animation because I can't see what's going on in the background. So I'll wrap that up and we'll get back to this part. Okay, so the character's done. Let's have a look at my complaining cat. All right. Okay, so let's have a look at this. The character is done. I've finished doing what he needs to do, or they need to do. And we can see the walk cycle happening, but it's not going anywhere. So here is where I need to activate onion skinning and really just reposition the character every part of that walk cycle to fake this. So this is task is actually reasonably easy once you've got the character asset built. So it's really just sort of positioning. And all I'm doing is matching the, the back of the heel to where I want it. So bang, oh, that slides. I didn't want that slide in there. So, oops, undo. So here I want that to sort of sit around there. And I don't know what's happened here. Yep, that's it. So here I'm just matching the front heel. Okay, we've got a, a bit of a, a passing step here. So I only need to animate on two. So every second frame I need to reposition him. So that I'm standing there, great. Move on another two frames. Uh, lift that heel. So I'm matching the front of the toe. Um, actually, I'm going to need to animate every single bloody frame because it's going to interpolate or basically work out the in-betweens for me. And I don't want it doing that. Um, so I want to um, F6 for a keyframe. Hopefully that'll work. Yep, that looks good. All right, toe coming down. Keyframe it. Uh, move it a little bit. So here you can see the start of that motion happening. Um, I need to toe, heel toe, lock it in. And passing step back up the heel. So what I'm trying to do is, as the character is walking, I'm comparing the front of the foot and the back of the foot to keep that motion consistent. And pressing F6 for keyframes that I need to drop in there. So here's the front of the toe as they lift the heel. And then the next frame will be an identical one, so F6. And then here, they're starting to move again. So yep, lift that heel. Uh, grab the page and move up a little bit. Uh, in there a little bit more. That one. That seems weird. Oh no, that's okay. Oh, that's a change. So F6 that. Back to here and let's look at that front foot coming down. Now if I want to get really fancy, I could probably add in a little bit of rotation so that the character movement is consistent with going up and down a hill. Um, but, you know, 
I'm really just trying to communicate the skills to you guys and then it's up to you to sort of start showing off with this. Um, so if you enjoy the animation stuff, go crazy. Um, otherwise, just, yeah, be able to produce a fairly interesting and that starting point like this is a great way to open the door to other possibilities. And this stuff becomes useful for all sorts of other areas that I've talked about previously, um, including motion graphics and game development. But that's sort of moving beyond what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to finish this up and we'll go from there. All right, so the moment of truth, let's see how this looks. And there's a the character. I'm quite happy with that. It's better than I've done previously, so I'm happy with, yeah, as I said, happy with that. You can of course color it in and jazz it up as a thing, but I'm really just focusing on the concept here. That's a walk cycle. As always, save and, well, save early, save often, and then export your final product. Thank you for your time.